This is time to take another look at the Iraq War. Again, using as my reference point, Friday, September 21, 07, USA Today. This is an article called The Soldier's Burden. The Soldier's Burden. It makes me think maybe it's part of what God says ought to be talked about more. Wake up, America! Come on, let's wake up to the fact that we're not acting like a moral nation. It's not too late for us to change. I guess the Bible, the old preachers call it, it's not too late to repent. And baby, we need to do some repenting. If we want to claim justify the claim that we're a moral nation. We need to do something about what's going on with this Iraq war. Where are the preachers on this topic? There are a few politicians speaking up and this article is prompted by one of them. But where's the group of politicians really taking a stand other than for political gain of this party or that party? Damnation! Isn't there something more important than whether the Republicans or the Democrats have the presidency or the control of the Congress or whatever? I think there might be. What's right ought to be right, what's wrong ought to be wrong, and it ought to have a heck of a lot to do with who is president or what party is, quote, in power. And where are us? Where are we? You know, old Pogo long ago on a comic strip said we have met the enemy and they are us. I didn't really understand that too much. I was too young at the time, but I'm getting a little smarter as I get older. We are the enemy. Where are the common people like you and me that are really speaking up on this issue rather than just taking one side or the other of the political debate? The Republicans are right. Oh no, the Democrats are right. Neither one's right. We're not doing the right things. How can we claim to be a moral nation when we let the few... Yes, the article here, a senator's son's over there, and there's a few rich, rich people's kids over there. But basically, this war is being fought by the poor and the lower middle class kids the ones of us that need the money I know all about that I am and was one of them let's look a little bit at what the article says Jim Webb Democrat Virginia proposed an amendment that on the face of it no reasonable American could object to he wanted to guarantee troops at least the same amount of time at home as they have spent on deployments. A year in Iraq, a year at home, and so on. And you know what? shouldn't even be necessary for a congressman to be talking about, let's pass an amendment here, let's pass a rule. Because you know what the, year, you know what the policy of the government is, the armed forces? Well... It is that, I'll have to find it here in this article, but in the meantime I want you to call your attention to the fact that some of our soldiers are on their fourth tours, some year-long deployments have been stretched to 15 months, and is it any surprise that this article reports the rates of suicide by our soldiers and the rates of divorce for our servicemen are up. That's no surprise to me. The official policy of the armed forces is much, much greater than what is being proposed by Senator Jim Webb. But the, the problem is we don't have enough troops. Why don't we have enough troops? Because we don't want to commit to the fact that we're at war. Oh no! We let the volunteer service, let the poor guys like me that wanted the money do the fighting. Why not a draft? I'll tell you why. It says right here. 
The way to maintain force levels is a military draft, which the nation would reject. So, reading on, but telling the generals to win a war and then depriving them of the means to do it is just senseless, senseless. Problem is, our resources don't match our objectives. Our great Mr. Rumsfeld, you know, remember what a hot shot he claimed to be? We could win wars with less troops and more technology. Well, sounds good. Maybe sometimes could work. I don't know. I know darn well it didn't work in this case. Well, it might have if we'd been smart enough to have the objective of topple Saddam and get the heck out of there. He could have looked good. Bush could have looked good. But we kind of goofed up. Mr. Bush, I don't know where in the world he, his head is and what he's doing with the staff that he's got. Well, he, I don't know. Between him and Rumsfeld and Cheney, they created a climate that you either agree with the boss or you kind of be out of the picture and maybe clear out of the service or out of the political scene at the capital level if you don't. Just say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, whatever you say, sir. Well, consider this from the article. It's an all too familiar mistake that we don't have enough troops. One that was widely recognized after the Gulf War was won in a hundred hours. Colin Powell, then chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, defined the characteristics separating that war from the misbegotten war in Vietnam. Success, he said, required a clear objective pursued with overwhelming force and a clear exit strategy. Any change in goals, he argued, required caution and a new commitment to the necessary means. How many new commitments has Mr. Bush and his cronies given us? And still given us. How can we claim to be moral when we are letting the few fight and die for us and fight and die for us under pressures of employment and redeployment that we have never asked of our soldiers at any other time other than when we were in a full-scale war like the Civil War, World War One, World War Two, We can do better, America. Let's work on it.